YouTube. And who is this lovely chap on the screen? He has no beard. That's right, I shaved. It is getting very warm, at least for my taste. And uh, it, it was time to to cut the beard, unfortunately. But you know, maybe towards the end of the summer, I'll feel like growing one back again. I'm growing my hair out though on my head uh, because I'm going to a music festival early in June uh, called the Bonnaroo Music Festival. And today um, I'm already smoking. Um, I've already lit the pipe. Um, I figured I would do just kind of a quickie review um, since this is kind of an older tobacco. It's not a new uh, one that I'm, you know, going to go into great detail about. I'm smoking out of my Nording Churchwarden uh, with the rose stone rustication, and what I'm smoking today is Drew Estate Meat Pie. Now I've had this tobacco since last summer, and I've barely been smoking on it. Not on purpose. I think I just forgot after a while. I've puffed it on it a couple of times and I enjoyed it. But um, today I felt like, you know, I have a couple of English blends that I have just not touched for months. And this one kind of intrigued me because I've never really gotten to just like fully analyze the flavor that it has. And this series of tobaccos that Drew Estate made are mostly aromatic. There's only one other that's non aromatic and it's like a Virginia flake, just like a normal Virginia flake. Um, I haven't tried that either, but I've had the um, heirloom cherry, I've had the vanilla one that they have, and I've had the um, black Cavendish uh, blend. Not the toasted black Cavendish, but the other one, I can't remember what it was called. But all of those are really good aromatics, and I'll recommend them uh, to you guys if you want to link down below. Um, but this one is a very smooth medium bodied English it's really it's got some earthy tones to it but nothing that's like ashy at your mouth it's just really smooth and uh, medium bodied I think I think mainly it's because I've aged it for a while that might be why it tastes that way but in all seriousness if it tastes this good now it probably tasted pretty pretty decent when I first opened the tin I about plum let it go out while I was talking I talk too much why am I talking on this video <laughs> Supposed to be enjoying my pipe, but I want to kind of compare this to tobacco to um, another tobacco that I reviewed on here a couple of videos ago, where it said it was great after a hearty meal, and that was an aromatic that was just really sweet and decadent. I I don't agree with that at all. This this tobacco would be good after a hearty meal, like after something really meaty and pie. <laughs> Uh, it's called meat pie after all, but you know anything that that makes you, that's really robust and that makes you feel like you had a good uh, full meal would be perfect for this tobacco. It would complement it very well. I'm also drinking a gin and tonic to go along with it. Very nice. Uh, the gin, nothing really worth noting about that. But the tonic that I have is this. I don't know if you can see that. It's, uh, it's called Q-Tonic, and they come in like boxes of four. It's a little bit more expensive than just the Schweppes uh, plastic bottle, um, but really, it's so much better. It's so much better. Uh, not just for flavor reasons, but also for like uh, health <laughs> reasons, because Schweppes, they use just like uh, high fructose corn syrup and all that stuff. I don't want to get too... Uh, health nerdy on you, but but that's just all this processed sugar that goes into tonic, and that's not really what you want in your gin and tonic. That ruins the flavor, if, especially if you have a good gin, like a, like a $40, uh, $50 gin that you're drinking out of. You don't want to ruin that with Schweppes. Uh, this has um, agave uh, in it that sweetens it, so so that's, that's like cactus honey, uh, I think. I don't know. It... I've had a couple of beers that have agave in it, and that's like a natural sweetener. Um, oh, no, no, no. I'm wrong. Agave is used to make tequila when they ferment it, but as a flavoring um, additive, they use it to sweeten other things. And so, whereas, whereas Schweppes would have like 30 grams of sugar in it per serving, this only has 17, and it is 10 times better. Um, so if you if you want a really good gin and tonic, spend the extra money and get that because it it is very nice and it adds a little amber color to your gin. It's really pretty. I like it. It's kind of smoky looking too. I 
you know it. Um, so yeah, there's nothing really much else to say about this. This is just a really nice smooth English for a, a pretty decent price, I think, so far. Um, some of the really good Englishes are starting to get a little harder to find now, and they're a little bit more expensive. I know Mississippi River, they stopped doing that in bulk, and um, now you can only get the tins of it for, I don't know, I, I order in the 8-ounce tin that I have right behind me right there. See that? Right there, there it is. Um, and I think that's about $35 now, if not more. And uh, so if you want just like a regular good English, uh, get this. It's like seven bucks, I think. And I have uh, two more videos that I want to talk about that are coming after this one. Tomorrow is the first one. And that is going to be a new series of videos that I want to do. It's going to be called Tobacco Quickies. Now what that is, is it's going to be um, if I feel like I need to feature an entire series of tobacco, let's say the East India Trading Company's tobacco, I probably could have fit all of those in one review, but I chose to do each individual video. Sometimes I'll do that, but in this case, uh, the first series that I'm going to do in one video is going to be this series, the Out of Office. I've smoked all of these and I have specific thoughts about each one, but I'm going to include in one video that's relatively five minutes or less. That's going to be a new series of reviews that I was going to do periodically throughout however long I want to do them. Um, so they might be a little more dispersed throughout the, the year than just my regular one tobacco reviews, but if a new series comes out that you guys want me to do a review on, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to them as soon as possible. Now the second thing I want to talk about is I ordered my first Dagner pipe. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of late to the party on that. But, uh, you know, I live the college kid lifestyle even though I've been graduated for about a year now and I've finally uh, saved up enough to afford one of these uh, very good looking pipes and I'm gonna do a review on it. So, Jay and Jason Dagner, uh, get ready for that. All righty then. And what was, what was I just doing? So that should be exciting. I'm excited. I'm optimistic about that. Um, I'm just excited to have like a pipe that costs more than a hundred dollars. That's that's honestly something I haven't owned yet. This was about seventy, so that I consider expensive. But I haven't really gotten into like the the big pipes yet. I'm getting up there though. Yes, I'm actually just kind of mesmerized by my lack of beard right now. It's, it's kind of hard to speak. Um. Uh, mm, uh. So yeah, um, any other just regular tobacco reviews that you guys want me to do, uh, put, put a comment down somewhere, right there. And uh, I, will, I will get to them as soon as possible. I knocked my camera a little bit. And I will see you in the following weeks. Tater Fruit Pipes, goodbye.